We've heard from a lot of them, some of my favorite speakers today. So I hope that you all have enjoyed the afternoon thus far. So I would like to talk with you briefly about another part of the Claire Booth Loose Policy Institute's mission. That's the part that's preparing conservative women for leadership. We like to do this, of course, through hosting events like this, but I like to personally talk to you a little bit extensively about how you all can go back to campus and you can be leaders and you can take what you learn doing that and take it to your professional life. It's scary. Campus activism is scary, as I'm sure all of you that are activists know, but it's worth it to do and you're going to learn a lot and you're going to take a lot with you when you graduate. Not long ago, longer than I'd like to admit, I was an intern sitting exactly where you're sitting now. And in fact, if you look in this picture, this is me right there. <laughs> Six years ago when I was a Claire Booth Luce intern, I came from a very liberal campus, very liberal. And I arrived in DC for an internship feeling really alone. I felt like there were no other conservative students like me. There couldn't possibly be any other young people, much less young women who believed like I believed. Thankfully, I was wrong. There was a lot that I learned that summer, but by and large, the most important thing that I learned was that I was not alone. And I hope that you all are realizing that as well. I made a lot of great conservative friends, as I'm sure you all will too. Uh, that goes back to what Caitlin was saying earlier. The friends that you make as an intern, they're not necessarily good for short-term employment, they're not going to help you find a job immediately, but many of the people that I met and got to know six years ago as a Claire Booth Luce intern are now holding similar jobs to what I'm doing in the conservative movement in DC. So now I work with them all the time, and so it helps to keep track of those people, get to know them, and follow them, keep up with them. Every three to six months, just check in. Of course now with Facebook, you guys use Facebook even more than I used Facebook when I was in college and social networking. With all that, you can keep up a lot easier and a lot faster. So make sure that you take the time to do that because it really is worth it. Another great thing about the friends that you make while you're here is that they are an invaluable support system to you. And you will find that, many of you probably already know, but when I went back to campus, it was a great group of people I could call anytime and rant about the crazy people on my campus. How was I going to deal with them? What was so wrong with these people? And they were usually going through the same thing. So it was fun to talk about, but it was also, on a more serious note, a way for me to not only vent, but also for us to share our experiences of how to deal with them. Sometimes sitting back and being quiet was not always the best option. One of the biggest lessons I learned that summer was how important cap campus activism really is. As college students, you all have such an incredible opportunity to make a difference. This is such an impressionable time of your life and you really, I know that people say this a lot, your parents probably said this to you, probably heard it from other people, but you really get to know who you are as a person when you're in college. It's a lot different than high school, and it's a lot different when you get in the professional world too. And I can definitely say, I know people say everything I learned, I learned in kindergarten. Everything I learned about myself, I learned when I was in college. And so you guys will find that too. You all are future leaders of the conservative movement. But why not start being leaders right now? Who says you have to wait until you're much older and you're the president of a group or you're in a big office position and you're in a corner office with windows, you should be leaders now. There's plenty that you can do right where you are. A college campus is one of the most left-leaning, demeaning, and scary places a conservative will ever be. So what better place to become a stronger leader than there? Some of you may be blessed to be attending schools that are largely conservative. That's great. That brings its own challenges. It may be easier to talk about conservative ideas with others, but you face the hurdle of convincing others even more about why they should care about the things that they believe in, why they should educate themselves and become stronger conservatives for when they leave campus. 
just as some of you are blessed to be attending such schools, I am willing to bet a greater number of you face the left in some way every single day on your campus. Not just from the student body, but also perhaps from professors, administrators, employees, pretty much anybody. I remember when administrators and faculty members on my campus wore Obama buttons and cheered in the hallways on the day he won his first term. A staff member from my college actually snickered at me in the student center on that same day because I wore a sweater covered in John McCain buttons. <laughs> it was my choice to do, nobody forced me. But it was interesting to see the reactions that I got. I remember even further before that, when after a particularly biased professor of mine, in an education class, no less. My family is a family of teachers. I took one education class and I hated it. So if any of you are gonna be teachers, that's great. I admire you for doing that. It was not my thing. But she went on and on about some leftist policy and it just, I couldn't figure out. It was my, my first year of college. It was one of the first classes I ever took. And I remember calling my dad. I was so frustrated. My dad was really what got me involved in the conservative movement. He was very conservative, and I like to say he taught me everything I know. But I remember calling him and wondering aloud, why on earth could college professors be leftists? So how could they be so liberal? Because I thought college professors were supposed to be smart. <laughs> he laughed. He said I was going to find all this out eventually anyways. Eventually, after my internship, I returned to campus after a few more semesters of working hard to spread conservative ideas. And it was hard, as I'm sure some of you know or will be finding out. I spoke up in class. I formed a conservative club on campus, which was not easy. After several semesters of that, I decided that I wanted to get into the movement full time. So I graduated a semester early, and I started hitting up my connections for jobs and I ended up back at the Claire Booth Lewis Institute. There are numerous lessons that I have learned over the course of my life, short life, I'm not that old. There are a lot of lessons I have learned as an activist, but also a lot of things that I have learned through my time with the Claire Booth Lewis Institute. Part of my job is listening to all the stories that you have, things that are happening to students on campuses across the country and spreading that information to others. A lot of people don't understand what's going on on campuses today or they don't think that it's as bad as it really is. I've heard uh, just about everything. Nothing surprises me anymore. But rather than give you every single lesson, I've condensed the best lessons into five steps and there will be a test. Your first step is thinking about what it is that moves you to act. There are gonna be some issues that are going to make you more interested than others. Some that just really, you just get all warm inside and you just get so mad and you're just so ready to talk about them and you're interested in them and, and you just get really excited about them. This could be issues of life. If you're very pro-life, that could be your issue. Very small government, individual freedom, constitution, it can be anything. One major concern for college students, and I know probably a lot of you are thinking about this now or will be soon, is the growing rate of unemployment and underemployment for recent college graduates. I was an intern six years ago and there are people that graduated with me that are still not working full-time jobs in the career field that they graduated with. You'll pro you're probably asking yourself, what if I can't get a job? Am I going to be able to pay my student loans? Am I going to be able to live on my own? I lived with my parents for two weeks and that was the end of that. <laughs> These are really serious questions. These are the kinds of questions and the kinds of issues that are going to make you think, okay, I need to tell people about this. I went to an all women's college. I know I've told some of you that. You could really say that every class that I had had an element of women's studies to it. We didn't have a women's studies department because the whole school was a women's studies department. <laughs> For me, it was liberal feminism that really, really perplexed me. I just 
could not understand the rationale of the feminazis on my campus. I just didn't get it, and it just totally perplexed me, and I was just, I just spent hours, and that sounds so nerdy, but I just spent hours wondering what on earth these people were doing. <laughs> it just didn't make any sense that it was everywhere on my campus, everywhere. Yes, I believed all women should be treated equally under the law. There's no question about that. I also believe that women should enjoy the same career opportunities, life choices. There shouldn't be anything to say you can't do that because you're a woman. That was fine. But that was where the similarities between me and them ended quite abruptly. Unlike the feminists, at least on my campus, I didn't think that a woman choosing to be a stay-at-home mom was yielding to the patriarchy. <laughs> Nor did I think less of women who choose full-time jobs careers, and have some combination of family and career. Either was fine by me. It was a choice, and it was their choice to make. I also didn't hate men. I'm married to one, so clearly I don't hate them. And I also didn't think I had to act like a man, or have government intervene on my behalf to get ahead. I, I just didn't think I needed it. Okay, so... Now you've given some thought to what kind of issues are really going to make you excited. What really makes you want to learn more about conservative ideas. The next step is to challenge yourself to become as informed as possible about them. You should do as much as you can to be an expert in your area or issue of choice. I know that college life is busy. I wasn't there that long ago, and I remember you got a lot to do, a lot of schoolwork. You want to have your social life, don't give that up. I'm not telling you that. But even if all you do is make 15 minutes a day to read the news, both sides, don't just read Fox, you got to read everything else too because you have to know what they're going to say. 15 minutes a day, and that's all it takes. Like I said before, with social media and Twitter and Facebook, it's a lot easier to do that. So just work it into your day. I still do that. I spend about 20 minutes every day, at least, just scrolling through the news and just seeing what's happening on CNN, Fox News, I check Judge Report, anything you can think of, and I just scroll through, see what's going on. I pick the articles that most interest me and I look through them, but generally, I've gotten a good feel for what the headlines for the day are. Being as well informed as possible is going to help you anticipate challenges that the left may throw at you. You have to know every side to an issue. So use some of that 15 to 20 minutes a day to read their stuff. Even though it's infuriating, even though it doesn't make any sense, you should read it. I remember when I read The Feminine Mystique by Betty Friedan, and I also read The Vagina Monologues by Eve Ensler from Cover to Cover. And they were gross, <laughs> and it wasn't fun, but I needed to understand it if I wasn't going to like it. I needed to make my own opinions about it, and so I read it myself rather than just take my opinions from others. Having this knowledge is immediately going to give you an advantage because more often than not, the left doesn't have facts on their side. You do. Usually, your challenger is going to be reduced to attacking you personally. If you find somebody and you're talking to them about this issue, you're talking about feminism, you're talking about constitution, you're talking about individual rights, and this person is clearly not on your side, they're probably just going to attack you personally. And you just have to say, oh, okay, fine. Huh, I won that. Because <laughs> you have nothing good to say. But you have to have the facts and you have to know the information in order to do that. Doing these debates, informal or not, they don't have to be formal. These can just be conversations when you're having lunch one day, conversations over dinner. I don't know how many of you live on campus, but we were required to live on campus all four years. So we had a lot of dinner conversations, lunch conversations. That was a good time to do that. Being informed is going to give you a lot of confidence, and it's going to be very empowering. At the same time, you have to realize you're not going to win every battle. I remember, in particular, on my campus, we actually had a formal debate, and this was right before Obama's first election. It was my last semester on campus, 
and I was pretty much the only outspoken conservative at that point. So naturally, when they decide to have a debate between conservatives and liberals, I get called because they don't know anybody else. And that was fine. That was fine by me. That was what I wanted to do. I knew it would make me a stronger person. I did terrible. I did awful. I fell on my face. The other person, the other girl that I was debating was very, very well informed. Even though everything she said was wrong, she still came off on top. And people liked her a lot better than they liked listening to what I had to say. I was okay. You know, obviously I survived. But I came out of it and thought, okay, what am I going to have to do to do better next time? Because there were other times. There were next times. And so I went and I did better. And I just made some changes. I better informed myself. And the next time it happened, I was ready. But sometimes you're going to fall on your face. And that's okay. Okay, so we've gone through our step one and two. Our third step is to start being vocal about your beliefs and really starting to speak out. Stop being a quote-unquote closet conservative. You've got your knowledge. You've identified this issue that you're really passionate about. So this is your logical next step. You should try and do what I did and make yourself known. I was the conservative girl on campus. Every week, we would have our club meetings, and I had a puffy paint t-shirt with our club name pasted over it, with the hours that we were meeting, and I wore it every Wednesday, all day long. And people knew who I was. This also made me approachable by other people who were conservative. So it works in that way, too. Yes, you make yourself known so that people know there's a conservative voice on campus, but you also want to make yourself available to the other people on campus who may not be as vocal about their beliefs. Make sure that you speak up in class. And this is probably the scariest part. And you have to be choosy about it. I understand completely that you are not always going to want to respond to every single crazy thing a liberal professor says. <laughs> I'm with you. I have been there. And there's a point where you have to say, OK, is it worth it for me to say this? Is it worth it for me to fill in the blank? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is. I remember having a professor, one of the same ones that wore Obama buttons. This is my political science professor. She was actually a big fan of Dennis Kucinich. I don't know if any of you know who he is. Really short. He ran for president. He's kind of annoying sounding. And he has a very tall wife. <laughs> she would always talk about how much she loved Dennis Kucinich. But eventually, she adopted Obama because Kucinich clearly didn't get the nomination. She would flat out not call on me or the other conservative student in the class. There were two of us in that particular class. She just wouldn't do it because she knew who we were. By that point, we were seniors. She knew us. She knew our club. She knew what we did. So she wouldn't call on us because we were going to say things that were right and were contrary to what she was saying. It was a huge challenge to stand up to her. First, because she didn't really make it very easy and two, because she was the head of our political science department. I can remember being scared to death to say anything. But I can also remember the times that I did say something were the times that made the most difference. And they were the times where I walked away from class saying, OK, clearly the whole class didn't agree with me, and neither did her. But at least I said it. And it might have made a difference to somebody. She usually laughed when we would say something. She'd just laugh. She wouldn't respond to it. She'd laugh. And a lot of students would laugh with her. But I remember very specifically a student coming up to me after a class. And she said, thank you. I'm glad there's somebody else that thinks like I think. And I had no idea that she was conservative at all. And she's never been outspoken. It's not her in her personality. But she cared a lot, and she just wanted to say thanks. So it makes a difference, even if you don't realize immediately or you feel like it's not. If a professor does grade you down, which has happened to me too, or they try to humiliate you in class, 
you should say something about it. Write a letter to your newspaper. Doesn't even have to be your school newspaper. People in your community who have been there for a long time and know the college well are going to want to know that these kinds of things are happening. You shouldn't feel like just because somebody has a PhD in something and they're standing up in front of a class talking to you about it, that they are totally immune from you being able to say anything about it. You should also contact me when that happens, because those make for really good stories. Like I said before, a lot of people just don't understand that this is what's happening on campuses. And if people are going to know, you all have to be the ones to say something. Recently, in the past couple of years, one of the Institute's student activists from Missouri actually went public about a story of how the spouse of one of the staff at her college spat on her conservative club's table at an activities fair and was not punished by the school at all. She actually, with our help, ended up going on a program of the Glenn Beck Show. And she got to tell her story and people were so outraged, alumni of the school were so outraged when they found out this was happening that they totally crashed the phone system after the Glenn Beck show had aired. People don't know. So you have to make it your job not only to convince the others around you, but to also convince other people and spread the information that this is happening on campuses. The person that assaulted that student was banned from campus shortly after that. So, our fourth step, and this is sometimes the hardest. Speaking out is hard, but the next step is a little tougher, but it's worth it. I don't mean to be negative about it. The fourth step is challenging others to care as much as you care. When you're on campus, you have this great spectrum of students. So if you're looking at it from your direction, over here are the way radical lefties. Over here are far right libertarians, very decidedly conservative, and then you have this right in the middle. And these are the people where it matters the most. These are the people that you need to reach and get to care. Most college students today, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, most of them are very uninformed or incredibly misinformed about current events and policy issues. How many of you know friends who get all their news from The Daily Show? Uh-huh, yes. Now, I'm not a fan of Colbert either, P.S. That's not news either, that's comedy. That's not really a serious news report. The results of that have created what you all are seeing today. And yes, it's mostly liberal, but there's also a big apathetic part of the student body of young people. They just, oh, okay. They just don't care. You all are all above the average just by being here, by doing an internship on Capitol Hill, by doing an internship in the DC area. You care about what's happening and most people don't. One of the best ways to get others to understand is to bring issues home to them and make them relevant to students your age. I could stand up here and say lower taxes are great You'd agree with me, but you probably couldn't give me a whole lot of information as to why. And it's hard to translate that to other students. One of the neatest things I've heard of being done, think of you're getting ready to graduate college. You're approaching these other senior students or juniors getting ready to graduate as well. And you're saying, okay, well, how much money do you think you're going to make? Or what kind of job do you want? Let's do that. What kind of job would you like? They say, oh, I want to be a computer engineer. Well, this is the salary you'll make. And they'll probably say, oh, yeah, that's a lot of money. That's really great. You know, that's like $80,000 or whatever. I don't know. That's great. That's a wonderful amount of money. Down here, you're going to line item all the taxes that come out of that money. And at the bottom, you get the take-home pay. And then below that, this is your cost of living. This is your cost of car payments and insurance and gas. 
and property taxes and all this other great stuff. And then you get this much lower number way down at the bottom. I always joke that students tend to be liberal until they get their first paycheck. <laughs> and they flip it up and they look at the withholding and they look at what's come out of it and they say, what the heck is FICO? <laughs> what is, what is Medicaid? I didn't realize that came out of there. Well, it's eye-opening nonetheless. Another example that we've had students do in the past is, and something you might have heard of, is the redistribution of GPAs project. And that's when people actually go out and kind of pull the audience, man in the crowd. So, you know, it's great that you have a 4.0, but here's this person and she's a single mom and, you know, she has to work to get herself through school and, you know, she, but, but she can't spend the time studying that you spend. So she has a 2.5. So wouldn't it be nice for you to take some of what you have in your GPA and give it to her? Because it's not fair for you to have this, for her to have that. And they always say no. They always come back and say, well, but I worked for that, that's mine. Duh. It never gets old. Okay, so our fifth and final step is hosting a conservative event on campus. This can take a lot of forms. If you come to the Claire Booth Luce Institute, I work with you to bring one of our campus speakers to your school. And if you look in the back, I think it's in the back of your binder, there's our campus speakers brochure. So if you look through that and you're even just mildly considering it, make sure you get in touch with me and we can talk about it. Bringing a speaker in particular to campus is a really empowering experience in leadership and organization, both of which are crucial job skills. It also shows that there is a stronger conservative voice on your campus than the left would like people to believe. They're going to do whatever they can to stop you. They're going to make it tough to get the funding. They're going to make it tough to get the room. When I was in college, I mentioned this before, I started a conservative club. I started trying to get us approved by the student government, which is ridiculous. But we had to be approved by the student government in order to post flyers on campus, reserve meeting space, things like that. Well, they basically told me that there was no room on campus club. At the same time, the Obama, Students for Obama is being funneled through very fast. So they get approved. They denied my approval of my club up until I left. But it was okay. We still put up our flyers. I just had to do a few extra steps. They had to be approved by the student activities office every single time. And for meeting space, we just met in our dorm community space. That's what we did. And we just changed the different location every week. There are ways to overcome these things. Speaking out makes a difference. Your hard work to bring a speaker, to organize it, to do the funding, to just organize it in general. It's a big project, but it's doable and it's really great skills to learn for when you graduate. I am here and the Luce Institute is here to help you all through that process. And you'll see in your binders there is our activism guide in there. So that's a good quick how-to from start to finish of bringing a speaker or hosting an event. So I urge you to take a look at that if you have the time. Okay, so we talked about our five steps. Pick an issue, learn everything about it, make sure you speak up, get others to care, and host an event on campus. It only takes one strong voice to make a difference. And it's hard. It's tough to be a leader. You've heard that today. It's hard to be a leader because sometimes people aren't going to like you. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's people that do like you that matter. The leadership skills you gain as an activist and the self-confidence that you achieve as a result of your knowledge and experience are going to set you up for a really great start post-college. If there is one type of employee that is always needed, it's one that's hardworking, adaptable, quick to learn from their mistakes, and self-motivated. 
classroom learning is valuable. But it's what you gain as an activist and as a leader that are going to be of high value to you later on. There are challenges, and you should expect those. I had some not very nice things said to me, both publicly and privately, mostly through email and social networks because people don't ever want to say it to your face. You have to develop a thick skin. Those people don't matter. They're only attacking you because you're right. If a professor or an administrator tries to silence you, say something about it. Don't feel like you have to hide what you believe just because this person has a PhD. You shouldn't be afraid to expose the left for what it is on campus. And that is, as you all know, a message of government intervention, restriction of personal freedom, hindrance to independence, and intolerance to any ideas but their own. Thank you guys.